Dear Father in heaven, I thank you so much for your presence in our lives, for even giving us the beautiful day that we have today to come together as a family. You are family. You, you believe in family. And so right now we're exhibiting that image with each other. Thank you for this time. And may we go away, leaving still united. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. Okay, so now we're going to get ready to get started. Uh, you know the purpose of this particular event that we're doing here with the forum. Uh, the room is really too small for what we really want to do, but we're going to do the best we can. Uh, what we have planned for today is actually we're going to um, going to introduce you to Michael, who will give us an overview of um, the work of doing historical search and documents and how important it is and what's out there for us to be able to access. Uh, that's the technical part of it. Then we're going to look at the most nurturing part of it. We're going to look at what the book has to offer us. And this is over history of, 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 four, of many years. I can say they've taken you back 400 years in this book. So it's not a one person or one time writing or whatever. That book has been in writing with the pens of our lives and our ancestors' lives for many, many years. Because it came through the storytelling. I don't know if you know, you remember, or some of you may not have experienced, but I have. My father, sitting on my father's, sitting on the floor, he's sitting in a rocking chair, I can just envision that. Sitting in a rocking chair, and we're sitting around him, and he's telling the story of his father and what happened to him and how he had to go through life from slavery into freedom. And as a result of that, we're able to write the story. It's just like I was thinking about Jack uh, this today when he was telling the story about Grandpa Richard. He knew the story because Daddy told us so many times. It's just like being there. And I wonder, Daddy, why do you keep talking about the same thing? And that's what we need to do with our children and grandchildren. Take time with those children and tell them where they came from. Let them know the struggles of life are there, but you are overcomers. Why are we overcomers? Because our foreparents overcame. That's why we are here. Because if they were not overcomers, we would not be here today. And we can be thankful for that. And we can look straight up. Nobody can tell us anything that we don't have the ability to be able to accomplish. Like uh, Linda was sharing. We can do it. You can do it. I can do it. We tell our children that. Never speak down to our... We know this. I'm just, just off on my little tender now. But never speak down to children and say you're no good and never anything good coming out of you. Never, never put the children and say, don't you come back to my house again. God does not want us to do that. And I'm not into a preaching mode. You have to excuse me. But I want to share this with you. These we things we be bold with our children. And some of you have adult children and grandchildren. Hey, be straightforward. This is how family is all about. And, and I had a little experience before we get into our, our message, our thing today, but I had a little experience about a few weeks ago. Uh, Lynn and I were making preparations. She's another cousin. We are making preparation for the location for our banquet. And in that process over at the board office, I slipped and I fell. And I fell on the concrete. And this whole side of my face was swollen. And it looked like I had been beaten up by a bunch of people. <laughs> it was looking so bad. But anyway, you know, when we got to the hospital, and so she asked me, she said, Lily, who can I call? And I thought, and I said, there's nobody to call right now. Why? Because, first of all, my, my siblings, all three or four of them, they're, they're not well. They can't come. My one sister had had surgery. The other sister's unable to walk. My brother was not feeling well, you know. And my other sister's in a nursing home. I said, well... There's nobody to call, you know, it, it's really interesting. But you know what? God put her there. She was my cousin. She was there. I said, well, you're here. I said, but the sibling's not there. So we can, there can come a time when we don't have that closeness 
with a, a person that's in our immediate life, biological life. But that's why we befriend other people and we befriend relatives. You know, and that's important. And I just want to be with that. So right now, what we're going to do as family, we're going to get a chance. I'm going to introduce you to the book that you have and let you kind of see. No, we're going to do Michael first. No, yeah. no go ahead. Okay. No, go ahead. You want to go ahead and introduce it, the book? Go yes, ahead. go ahead. All right. Okay. Um, you, you've had time to look through it and everything, but what, we want to, what I want to let you know before we have uh, Michael and Linda on is that in the acknowledgments, because naturally it's acknowledging everyone, and then of course naturally the greetings coming from uh, the chairperson, and of course now we have that also coming from the mayor and uh, congressman, and we have the proclamation. But in the table of contents itself, the book is divided according to families, as you can probably see. That's uh, page nine. And it's, and it's there divided into families, so it makes it very easy for you to go to your family line, if you know it. So today is what we're going to try to figure out, what line that you're coming from. And some of you already have your armbands on that shows the different line of where you came from, okay? And, uh, and we're going to group up in that respect, according to the lines. And it's going to be kind of fun because once you group up in one group, then you're going to find yourself, you got to, you have on two different colors. Oh, she has three. Three ways. <laughs> three this fair. Well, you're going to have to find yourself in another group, too. you got to get to know some more relatives, okay? And I will give you a sheet of paper, and I want you to write down as many relatives that you have met and got information from within the the time frame that we're going to set aside, okay? And then after that, then someone, the person who has the most, will get a book. Okay, that person will get a book. And try to take this book and give it to someone who you know would love to have it, but don't have the, uh, the funds to purchase it. That's how we connect, okay? All right. So, so what do we see now? How many of you actually know that you are a part and see the first family that we have here. I'm on, I have my, here's my book here. We started with the Richard Hadley family, your closest relative. This, this is on page nine. Page nine. Page nine. We are looking at the table of contents. Okay, and uh, we're looking at Richard Hadley and family, and he's found on page twelve, but. The, the table of contents is what we're looking at. Just want to know the word rich and happy. Do you know it or not? How many of you actually know that you can talk the lineage all the way back up to rich and happy? Anyone? You know, some of you, right? Okay. What about uh, Elizabeth? I should have more names. Okay. And it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting you got that. Okay, because actually Elizabeth has what? Hawthorne, Dickie, and Wall. Uh huh. Yeah, that's the connection. Okay, Martin Hadley. Mark, Mark Walden, excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. And we have Mac Hadley, Mac Walden. We have a few of those. Okay, now we're looking at Watkins Hadley. Let's review the practice. Oh, Simon. Simon D. Hadley Jr. with Charlotte Ann Moore. Okay. And that ties in Watkins and Jasper too. Because a lot of them married first cousins. Yeah. You know? Ella, yeah, Ella, yes. yes. <laughs> so that's that's what we're looking at. And we really, you know, when you when you were growing up, your parents only said, but that's your cousin. That's your cousin, that's your cousin. But you didn't know how you were related. So that's what we're looking at now. And then Watkins and Jasper, then there's Herman Hatley. And remember the Herman Hatley. Let me see. Let me see Herman. There's also a Susie Hatley. We've been doing search on Susie Hatley. Probably need to find, get more information from you on Susie Hatley because that's what we're looking for. Okay. And uh, Dennis Hatley and Mary Nixon Hatley. And that's Simon, that's a Simon Hatley Jr.'s third son. Dennis Hatley. You have to go deeper into your research to find him. Uh, and under, under Dennis Hatley, we have George Wesley Hatley and Caroline Hatley. That is with Chris Bynum. Okay. Quick question. So with the Simon, the Simon Hatley Jr., what's your name of these, or all the, all of his children? Simon Hatley Jr. Yeah. 
Carter Jr. that we know yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. But there's another set. Yeah. There's Dennis yeah. Tanner on the other yeah. side. Know. Okay. All yeah, right. you got that right. I like your chart too. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, that was good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as we open up, we open up the book here, and um, the book begins with uh, Simon Hadley Sr. You notice, okay. And that is really the top, as far as on the patriotic side, that is the very top. The top okay. And under that, we have their two children here that are African American children, or black children. I put this way, a mulatto. Let's put it that way, okay? Let me break it that way. Because we know there's a mixture of Native American in us as well, okay? And then, of course, there's some Asian, too. I don't know if you know that. You can just look at the eye structure of some of us. We have that Asian look. Yeah, it's, it's there, too. Now, okay, and under that, then next step is uh, Richard Hadley. I'm not going to take up a lot of time. I'm just kind of scan through it a little bit. But Richard Hadley here, his bearer, Jack, uh, Jack told you, He's really buried behind the house there on Fair Oaks, which was called the Mitchell Place. And um, and what we find here is that not only there, but I also find out that uh, Memelockins uh, were, were buried there. Nathan Lockins Sr. Uh, there's a couple of other his children were, were buried there. Memma was his daughter, but she married Nathan, and she was buried there. Oh, Hannah uh, Richardson was another one of his daughters that was buried there too in that same area. Um, so apparently, and this is what we're looking at now, that was owned by Pe Pebble Hill, uh, not Pebble Hill, but all of that property was the same property, the Johnson and the Mitchell place there. And for some reason, pa Grandpa Richard was buried there. Rather than buried on his own property, he already had, he had land. My question is, why wasn't he buried on his own property? So I'm looking for that. You find that? That's great. But that's what we're looking for. And we're looking for his mother. That's another search that you want to have. His Grandpa Richard's mother because he did not know it. My father said that I asked him what was his mother's name. And I remember that emphatically. And he said, and he said, what well, my dad said, he doesn't know his father. He didn't know his mother. <laughs> he didn't know her. Uh, Aunt Peggy from... Simon Hadley's side uh, of the family, which is the oldest son, which is one of the sons of Grandpa Richard's first set of children. She said that, um, that Grandpa Richard looked like an uh, Indian. He had long, straight hair. And I got it notated in here. And that came from the, um, from the book, the, 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 uh, the souvenir book in 2018. And that was done up in uh, New Jersey. Okay, but anyway, as you read through the book, you got history. I'm just going to flip a few pages here. You got history. If you go on over to, to page 22, you see documents. These documents are coming from right from your local um, uh, history. You know, if you're looking locally for, for individuals that live in that particular area where you live, you can go there for, for documents, okay? You can go there for marriage, old marriage license is what you're going to find in this book. Uh, you're going to find death certificates, <coughs> the reasons why they die. And it is important because, back to what Linda is going to share, we have a tendency to have certain types of illnesses as a result of our environmental living. You know, and also you can look at it as biological, but because the way we eat, we learn to eat the wrong way, and we end up with the same kind of, but I'm not going to get into all of that. <laughs> That's her part. <laughs> I don't want to say something and get all out of place, but anyway, that is very true. What you eat is what we're going to, you're supposed to eat for strength, and they say it's not for drunkenness. <laughs> That's a <laughs> Okay, and then the first section you're going to find is uh, Grandpa Rich's first wife because that was first. She was first. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, she's first in this book. They're first in this book. And we have listed all of the children that we know of, the family information we have gathered. And, like I said, a lot of this information came from uh, the 2018 Family Reunion book by New. Uh, by Uncle Simon's uh, children up there. And they did a fantastic job mm -hmm. of that. I learned that they all lived, basically, when they moved up, you know, families just move in groups and they go back and reach for the other family members 
to come and join them. I said, that is so wonderful. And they had a whole street called Mount Vernon Street. And I learned it. And I said, oh, is there someone that's from this time of family? Yeah, raise your hand. Yeah, you're, I'm right, am I right? Yeah. About Mount Vernon Street? Yes. Yes, in fact, most of every, the family all live right down the street. Broke one house to the other. You would go from house to house and, and on Sundays and have dinners and whatever. See, I've read about you now. I didn't know. I'm right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Lily? Yes. I have one question on on the page 15. Uh -huh. um, on the top of it where it has um, Simon D. Jr. Uh -huh. oh, is it, now that Simon is talking about, um, that's Richard's son, right? No, no, no. Simon, okay, let me back up. Okay. Simon Sr. is ahead. Right. And Simon Jr. is his son. Right. And then, so who is this, in this particular list right here, who is this Simon D. Junior, on the top of page 15. That's his son. That's his son. Oh, it, it is. Page 15 up here. But it's talking about what is it, but it's listed under Richard and Angus children. Oh, okay. You so know, it's a thing. So that Junior. It's right. a thing. Families have a tendency to love the name to their children after their siblings. Okay. And their uncles and aunts and cousins. Mm -hmm. and, you know, y'all want to name you after your aunt. I was named after my aunt. Mm -hmm. Linda, well, who you name after? Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, so, um, so, did he have the name Junior? Mm -hmm. yes. so Richard, not, I'm talking. I'm talking Richard's son. He had the name Junior too. That's what I'm asking. I'm Richard's son, Simon. You see, you see Simon, did you, you see that? You know what? I thank you for that. That should not be Junior. No. That's right. It should not be Simon D. Junior. You can just be on pencil. You can scratch that. Okay. That's not correct. And then one more. Uh -huh. One more. Right under the, uh, where it says in 2018, HHD, uh -huh. it says Cousin John Williams, son of Han uh, Hannah Hadley. Williams. And it says grandson of Simon Hadley. That should be grandson of uh, Richard Hadley Sr., I think. Right there. John and great, great, no, right and great grandson of Simon Hadley Sr. So they were sweet. John Williams? Okay. Are oh, they okay? So it should be, huh? <laughs> John. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So tell us about tell us that should be right there. Right there. What she's saying is the fact that Those it should be grandson of Richard, Richard Hadley Sr. and, and Agnes Mead. Right. Okay. And Agnes Mead. Okay. Okay. And great great grandson of Simon Hadley Sr. and Agnes Mead. Okay. Okay. Agnes Mead. And grand, okay. great grandson of Simon Hadley. Senior. Senior. Oh, we're in class to learn to oh, correct. Okay. Let's go ahead, girl. Thank <laughs> <laughs> okay. you. Okay. Anybody else got a comment? Right off the bat. It's on page 15. Okay. Right, 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 right. okay. Did you see what she's talking about? Yes. Okay. All right. So you can make that. Thank you for bringing that to us. Grandson of oh, Richard Hadley Senior. It should be. And then it's a great grandson of Simon Hadley Senior. So, it, yeah, it should be. Grandson of Richard Hadley Sr. Mm -hmm. and great and, and Agnes Meeks and great grandson of Simon Hadley Sr. Simon Hadley Jr. No, not not Junior, because Junior. This Richard is, is Junior. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Richard Simon Hadley Jr. Senior, 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 senior. Senior, senior. Simon Hadley Sr. Okay, that's on page fifteen in the second paragraph. We say reading the twenty eighteen. Oh, okay. uh, right in there. It's the second and third line and fourth. Second, third, and fourth line. Okay, wait. Where says grandson of Simon Hadley? It should be say. It should say grandson of. Richard Hadley Sr. and Agnes Meeks. Mm -hmm. And real quick, um, could you? And what's the email? If what's the email? What's the email so that as you all go through the book, y'all can send over corrections that you may see over to the email because this information needs to be corrected as we go. Not every reunion, but as we go, it's a working document. Okay. So what's that email? Okay, Hadley photos. Hatley photos at gmail.com. It's not in the book, but if you could write that down. Hatley photos. Thank you, Mike. Hatley photos at gmail. Hatley history photos. Oh, history? Oh, Hatley history. I'm sorry. Hatley history photos at gmail.com. This is if you have any corrections you want to make to this, and this can be passed on to the person who does the next book. Yes. 
Yeah, yeah. 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 Hold on, we have a question in the house. That's okay. So when we arrived and um, I registered and I said I was for Richard Hadley or Agnes Meeks, um, everyone was kind of surprised, but the Richard Hadley Agnes Meeks line runs deep. In Cumberland County, New Jersey alone, we're just a thousand deep. Wow. I know. So, I know. I know. Young people, we are 2,000. We are 2,000 deep. 2,000 deep. Two thousand <laughs> deep. My okay. grandfather, Simon Hadley, and uh -huh. his siblings, Paul left Thomasville and went to Bridgeton. Mm -hmm. We're all still living. <laughs> so, we're all still living. Praise the Lord. I know. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes. My father talked much about his brother. Uncle Simon, I never met him, but Daddy talked so much about it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Deborah? Yes. Yes, I know. I've talked to her several times on the phone. Sorry she wasn't able to make it. Yeah. Did a fantastic job. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Remember, get Hatley History Photos at gmail.com. And I don't have any way to write it up. I don't have any markers to put it on the, on the whiteboard there. So. I think we've got it. Okay, so please send it in. Please send it in, and then it can be forwarded to the next person who works the book and want to make and, and make corrections on it. All right, so now let's move right along. And if you got any ideas, please share right now because we're going we're gonna to spend a whole lot of time here. But and just want to remember call that there are more than one or two Simons. Yes. Simon Hatley Senior and Simon Hatley Junior, yeah, we talked about. But there are other Simons, such yes. as in the, the family from New Jersey, there was a Simon D. Hatley. Right. So yeah. don't think it's just the senior and junior they're referring to. Yeah. Many of our, our ancestors were renamed so many times, yeah. and it can be confusing. Which Simon are you talking about? What right. Richard are you talking about? We got four Richards yes. for us in our family yes. alone. So like, that's you know, not Simon Senior, but you got my my uncle Simon, my uncle Richard. Oh, and you a got brother a Richard. brother. Her yeah. brother is Richard. <laughs> you know, and it's not third or the fourth. It's Richard something else. And see what we have to look. We look for is the birthdays. Yeah, right. That's what that is about. very key in our search. Is birthdays and also being able to line up with who their parents were or some other uh, function, you know, thing that we know, marriage license, that kind of thing. These are the key pieces there that we want to be able to look, uh, do our search with. And we all need to continue with search. And I will tie in that at this time, ancestry.com is there, it's at a cost, but you can also go to familysearch.com and uh, it's free. Okay, so you can, and it ties you into whoever else is working. We have a hand back here. Yes, I'm raising for her. She's asking about what happened to the cemetery today, who that is. Come on. So, at the couple of hills today, when I was walking through the cemetery, I saw the tombstone here of Simon Hadley Jr. Right. Who was Simon Hadley Sr.'s son, correct? Right. Correct. Okay. So, the docent in the museum said that there was a man by the name of Johnson. And Simon Hadley that originally had the land at Pebble Hill. Okay. Is that Simon Senior or Junior? Is Simon that information is incorrect. Okay, first of all, the original owner of Pebble Hill Plantation was Thomas Jefferson Johnson. Yes. Okay. Thomas Jefferson Johnson married Simon uh, Hadley Senior's daughter, who was Simon Hadley Junior's sister. Her name was Jane uh, Wilkerson Johnson, Hatley Johnson, okay? And so Jane and um, Thomas Jefferson Johnson were husband and wife. They were the original owners of Pebble Hill Plantation. And what happened was because Simon Hatley Jr. never married, but he had all of these children from black women, he was not liked by the white society. Because not only did he have children, he treated them well. Okay. And so he was kind of ostracized in the community. So the reason he's buried in Pebble Hill Plantation, and this was told to me by older ones, like I said, I used to visit when I was growing up, was because his sister wanted to make sure he was with the family when he passed. Mm 
with some family. So she made sure he was buried in her family cemetery there on Pebble Hill. That's why he's buried there. Most of you all who don't live here don't know that Simon Hatley Sr. is buried out in Beechton where I live, okay. where the white cousins live. And I've been back there many times and the graves are so high off the ground, they didn't bury them under the ground, they buried them on top of the ground. And that's where Simon Sr. and his family is buried, all out there. And I wanted to take you all there on the tour, but we can't because it's way back in the woods. It's only one way. You can't turn the buses around. So, but if you ever come down and want to go out there in your cars, I'll be glad to show you. But that's where Senior is, and that's the reason Simon Jr. is at Pebble Hill, because of the sister. Okay, okay. So, uh, go ahead. Uh, sure. Elizabeth, Betty, and Lucy, Lucy and Elizabeth are now, who, what is her connection to Simon? We, we're going we're to get to all that. <laughs> <laughs> we're going there. What I want you to understand, right, what we want to understand right now is how to, what this book is going to offer you as you ask these questions. Uh, we're going to do an overview, and that's why Linda's up here, because she knows quite a bit of the old history. So what we're going to do is go over, let you know some of this is in the book. So if she says some things, Things is not very clear. You say, okay, I can get the rest of it. It's here in the book. You kind of help to solve that question mm -hmm. and how to find it. And that's what we're doing. Just basically just doing an overview, overview of the book itself. But it will help you to answer those questions. What's your name? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Jocelyn Walden. Jocelyn. 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 Thank you, Jocelyn. Okay. Thank you. Uh-huh. Okay, now. So, um, any other questions about that? We're, we're going to move on. Uh, look on page 30, and you'll see where they're divided statistics for Hannah Richardson. And you see here, page 30, and it actually gives you some information. Say what if you really wanted to know what her father's name was. It gives it here, Richard Hatt is her father. It says that we don't know what her mother's name is, but we know you can go look at other siblings and find out that it's Agnes Meeks. Okay? And, um, and now, along with that, after 1870, 1870 on, we have the censors that identifies us and where we, who we lived with. And it's listed as head of household or the husband and then the wife and their children, or it may just say other persons in the home. So, which means that that may be sometimes, you know how we have children, blended families, we have other children living with us and parents, you know. Uh, help to raise other family members. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's one thing we have there. Okay, um, we'll go right through uh, Agnes Weeks and then we go right on into uh, Lula Wall, Lula Wall, <laughs> Lula Reed, and uh, we'll find her family. That's the next section there, and that's what those pictures are there. And we have the information on the Okay, it actually starts. Yeah, 37, and you see uh, Richard and Lula Reed have it. We do have and We have the grave site here where I told you he's at Fair Oaks. He's buried there right behind the Mitchell house. For some reason, he's buried right in the yard, in the backyard of that house is where the, the, the uh, cemetery is. And that's my grandma. I had experience with her, so I know, I know my grandma. This is um, your grandmother? This is my grandmother. Your, yes, your dad's my mother? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Richard Hadley uh, was my fa my father's father. His like oh, grandfather. Who was your father? Uh, Dennis. His name was King Dennis. Okay, that's what I thought. I just want to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. And of course, this is their marriage license, so you can access that kind of thing, which is kind of nice. Uh, and then I've mentioned about the census. And this is the census of 1910. You can see where he had not passed, and the list of children that are in the home. So it'd be interesting, you know, you go to the census and you can find your, your aunt, your grandparents, your um, nieces, nephews, whoever, depending on who you're looking for to add in here. And you can come up with a big history of what went on in the home and in the family and whatever happened with, your, with children, you know. All right, so let's move on. And it takes you right on through all of the siblings of the first son, who was Jasper, and I knew him as well. And uh, he used to come down and visit. And that's one thing families did years ago, is every summer they would come back. Many of them would, would, would migrate north. After here in Thomasville, Georgia, this area, we would migrate up the East Coast. 
And for some reason, the people like from Alabama, Mississippi, migrate straight up to Chicago and Detroit, even though I had family to go up into the Detroit area. But uh, it's interesting how they migrate uh, to other locations. And this and here's all the children. I have, I have one, uh, I have one question on that one. Mm -hmm. So that Jasper that we just got to talk, this Jasper right here, is a different Jasper than the one that Simon had to do with. Right, that Jasper, Jasper, the Jasper that we're looking at right now is uh, Richard Hadley and Agnes Meeks. Okay, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so. Uh, not Agnes Meeks, but I mean Lula, uh, uh, Lula, 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 yeah, Lula, Lula Reed. Got it right here, I got it right here. Yeah, yeah, that's right. their son. Mm -hmm. see, see what I mean about when yeah, we talk Jasper. about names, say, you know, right. we name somebody after that, it would be quite confusing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, so then it takes us right on through. Josie, um, Alexa Hadley, we have his uh, grandson here, great grandson. Right. Grandson, here he is. Here. This is on page 44. Uh huh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and that's Robert, Reverend Robert, uh, right here. Santa Robert. Yeah, Santa This is uh, Uncle Jasper. Uncle, Uncle Josie's grandson. And his uh, name is Joseph. He's uh, King Dennis's nephew. This, yeah, and Robert. Richard Hadley's great grandson. Yeah, Robert. 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 Do the selective service kind of thing, sign up. And they did that with us as well. So you have to do that. My father, this is my father's. And also my mother and father marriage license here. Now, this is an updated one. What happened was that when my mother and father got married, the, the minister never did turn it in. So, funny thing happened. My sister always said, I, she said, I remember when mother and daddy married. And mother said, no, I don't think so. <laughs> but what had happened was that um, they had to have some legal things done and to show proof they didn't have the marriage license. So they had to go before the, what, the probate judge or whoever it is. And so I guess they must have said, I do in front of her. <laughs> she went with it because she was the baby. And so she always said that. Yeah. Okay. And um, that's, that's the, the next section. That, it, that section takes you right on into my family. And that's... Uh, You'll see that uh, Dennis, uh, Dennis had his family that's still part of uh, Grandpa Richard and uh, Lou Louie. Okay, we're trying to see something else that was a little bit different. So you got all of that. I'm kind of moving a little bit faster through here. You got all of the family there. Then the next section you're going to go into is Elizabeth Walden. That's what I was going to say. Elizabeth Adley Walden and... Okay, I'm, I'm going there now. It's on page 105. Okay, that's the beginning. Now the next section. Okay. So the first section you just looked at was the um, was Richard Hadley's family. Mm -hmm. All right, and you can insert as much if if you want to create your own book about your family. You can take this and then give you some ideas. Go to yeah. some of the other family reunion books because like. One book gave me at gave me dates. Like the book up in Bridgeton gave me dates for the Simon Hatley family birth and death, wherein some of the other books didn't give me that. So therefore this it worked. So we have to search out other books. Okay. So now you go to the Waldens and in the Waldens here is um Linda will tell you more about the Walden family, but um it, it breaks it down for you. The pictures there, you can see the little girl on page one ten. And look how she has grown. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about your facial expression and everything. Look, the face is still there. I miss Betty, but you girl. She's going to get me back, okay? <laughs> okay, um, and then, uh, then it talks about Jerry and Eliza McGriff. How many McGriffs we have here? McGriffs. Okay, we got one. If you're a descendant of the McGriffs, then you're related to Jackie Robinson, so he's yeah. part of the McGriffs family. His mother was a McGriff. Yeah. 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 
Yes, I remember her too. She's a street lady. Okay, and we, we turn. We have other pictures in here, and then we have the names. We're trying to match up some of the names with the pictures. Basically, this was already some of the other books, so we just pulled it and put it in here. Compiled. It. That's what you do. You compile the books. You lay it out and organize it. And I have to commend my son and his daughter and his wife how they were very helpful in in uh, pulling this together, along with the books that I received from family members. Jack had a whole wealth of Okay, so you can go right through that. Now on page 123, 122 and 123, it gives you the Dickey family. Who's in it, the Dickey family? So the, what, why would the woman be first? I thought she was the hospital first. Well, you want me to start on this? Huh? No, no, we're talking about that. I'll let her oh, tell you about that later. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you, I'll let her tell you about that. I think I'm going to take about five more minutes probably. And yeah, you found that on page 122. Okay. And she'll explain to you why that that happened. Okay. Okay. 122, 123, and it takes you right on through the line of the Dickey family, who is a part of Elizabeth. Okay. All right. Okay, and um, and then the McGriff family. She, uh, uh, Linda's grandmother is McGriff that married into the um, the Walter. family. Yeah, the Hamlet. Yeah, the Walter family. So, but anyway, and that's where she ties in on page one twenty six, one twenty seven. She ties in uh, Jackie Robinson here, the family there, and then yeah. You know, uh, 128 is where she has, that's the McGriff, that's the brother, and she'll tell you more about him, the brother of her uh, grandmother. And then it goes into the Max Robinson and the Jackie Robinson, that's on page 129. On that's all over the wall. Right, right. 129, 130, 131, 32. Okay. Okay. All right, let's move on. And then on page 133, introduces uh, the Henry Walden son of Patrick Wall, and she'll explain to you how that or how that is. All right, and then I know you've seen something on the chart that relates as well. So I'm kind of quickly go through that part. Sam Walden, that's page 136, and then Mac Walden, and the descendants of Mac Walden is there. So wherever your lineage is, you'll see it. Fleming Walden, and how Fleming Walden family fits in. And in Fleming Walden family, we have anyone here for Fleming Walden? Well, we have Fair, a, Mr. Yeah, Joe and Joe. Joe, I think, yeah, there is Joe right here. Okay. okay, and he is, yeah. And we're going to give you a moment or two for that to share something. Now we got, then we go right over into, on page 144, is the descendants of Simon Hatton Jr. and Charlotte A. Moore. 144. Okay, that's the beginning of that section. And you're going to see Jasper and Watkins have a family because they blended. I guess they were, the settlement, the community was right there together, closeness. Mm -hmm. Now what happened is there's a wheel, and in the back you'll see portions of the wheel. We're not going there, but the wheel was written by Simon D. Hadley Jr. His will was that he gave Charlotte the opportunity to stay in the house as long as she lived. And then uh, the gun that was given to Jasper, uh, Jack has it in the museum. You'll get a chance to see it. It was given to us by, let's see, mm -hmm. the, the man that, I'm not sure. who? I can't remember. Not sure. Sure. Anyway, yeah, it was donated to the museum, but that's the gun that, the same gun that uh, Simon D. had. They had Will to Jasper. Ernest Thompson. That's it. That's his name. Ernest Thompson. Well, you're the grandson, so he would know. Okay, that's what I'm saying. You know, that's why I was asking the question. Yeah. Okay. All right. So these are the pictures here that talk. And Hopeless Hadley is the son of whom? Does anybody know? Jasper Hadley Sr. Who? Right. Jasper Hadley Sr. That's right there. And that's what we want to be able to look at. So that's where Jasper and then Watkins with their children, you know. And then also with, with Elizabeth's daughter, Mary Walden. You know, that our children came from that. So that those, that's the section there. We're gonna move on. And uh, then Lula Hatley Johnson, page 150. And then when we look at the Jasper Hadley and Hager Hadley, page 154, then we see the uh, descendants here. 
and it's chronologically done. The reason is here because somebody took the time to put it in here. So that's what we're asking you to do. Take the time to, to put in your piece and then add it on to for the next book. Okay? And that's why we're calling it volume one, even though it compiles all of the other books because we know now that you add, and it's a lot that still was left out that could put it in there. But you can add on to this book and create volume two and all like that. You know what I'm saying? This thing can grow and you can imagine how other people will actually look upon it as being uh, history that's never been written before. 158 is the Falk family. And you tie in with the Falk family, you also have um, the Heinz family. Am I correct on that? Okay, Jas the descendants of Jasper and Hager, right on through. And we're almost there. I like this setup here that's done on page 164. You're with me on page 164. And that's Elizabeth Betty Walden. And it showed Harkless Hadley and Mary Walden and, and their descendants of the Hines. Any Hines in here today? All right. They're, they're, uh, they're right up front. Okay, this was the Bruce sent this in. Bruce Adams sent this in. Uh, very nice done. Okay, that's a family reunion, apparently. And so we go right on through. Um, Let's take us, uh, we're going to pass um, American Hatley Family, page 179. This gentleman here on page 179, Charlie, uh, Charles Copeland, uh, you know a little bit about him. I'm going to share that about him, Charles Copeland. Also, it was Matt Hatley, uh, Matt Walden, I believe, that set up the school or something. Might have. Might have. Okay, but anyway, definitely uh, Charles Copeland was very instrumental in working with Baker with our uh, reunion when he was in, when he was alive. In fact, he was the principal of the school in payroll for a number of years. But uh, he was very helpful. On the page 181, we see Guy Hatley. Uh, he's a descendant of his Henry Hatley. His Henry Hatley was trying to think which son he was. Henry Hannah. Uh, he, these are his children. Hannah, Guy, and Irvin. Right. Yeah. Those and, and yeah, Hannah is uh, she married Charlie McGriff. She married Charlie McGriff, right. Okay. So this guy had he had owned a funeral home and it's still named Hatley Funeral Home, even though it's owned by a corporation right now. But um, he's the one that started the Hatley the funeral home, Hatley Funeral Home here at Thomasville, and that's a picture of him. Okay. Um, I think that takes us very, pretty much to the, now we got one last family, <clears throat> where we got the Martha Love, Thompson Johnson family, then we have other family members that are still speaking out and learning about their heritage. Then it takes us to Dennis Hatton, which is the third son of Simon Hatton, of Simon Hatton, and this is uh, Simon Hatton Jr., and it's understood that it's as a result of Rebecca the slave, okay, the Dennis came from. And you'll find on page 186, Dennis Hatton, the great grandfather, and then he gives the uh, great great grandfather of the descendants of the people that you're going to read ne in the next few pages. Okay? And this is his wife and the children. This was pulled together for us by Chris Hatton Bindrum. And is she here? She's not in there. Okay. Local person here in Thomasville. And also, this is her descendant, her uh, descendants here, the lineage. It's on page uh, 187, on several pages. Okay, so some of uh, our family members are having a problem trying to find out where they fit in. I was talking to someone today, and they found out that, uh, I think it's Willie Jackson, yeah, yeah, discovering that his mother was uh, was a Hatley. You know? So, look at me searching. Sitting at the table with us. Okay, so that's that, and then it takes you right on through each one of um, Walter Reed, Hatley family, and their lineage straight through. Do you think all of this information came from the um, census and stuff, like the book? This which, which, information on this family and all this. From family members pulling it together, sitting down, taking time. Oh. I had another book that actually did this lady. Joanne Woodard. Yes. You know, 
She had it on, it was online there for a minute, but I have her book. It's fantastic. I don't know how many years she did work on it. She did a fantastic job of pulling the families there. She included us in it as well. That's what drew my attention. But, um, but you can do it too, just by taking this book and then rearranging it. If you use the familysearch.com, it would help you lay it out. I didn't have time to do any layouts. All I can do was busy trying to collect. <laughs> uh, but anyway, any comments or questions about that, what I just finished sharing with you? Okay, it's, Michael said just want you want you to go ahead and get started. So okay. we're going to now hear from Linda. She's going to share what God has given her in references to and our ancestry. Okay, thank you. Great job. Thank you. Is just kind of start with the beginning of time when we first started as Walden and Hatton in this country. Um, unfortunately, many of our, our mothers, the ancestors who were black, who were slaves, um, did not have much of an identity. They didn't give them that privilege. They were numbers. And so there were a few of them that had names. They took away their African names, so that's why we don't know much of our African ancestry. Now, you can always go to um, 23andMe, that Thomas County got its name. But it wasn't from Simon Sr., it was from this person named Jet Thomas, who was also in the military, who it was named after, Jet Thomas, not Simon Hadley. So anyway, um, that was just a little bit of the beginning. But the first Hadley to actually come here was Thomas Hadley. And Thomas Hadley came from Ireland and settled in North Carolina. And we believe that was the father of Simon Hadley Sr., who was born in 1760. Um, he died in 1836. Um, Simon, as I mentioned before, his children, Elizabeth Hadley Michael and Dickie Walden, and uh, Simon uh, Hadley Jr., Mary, and Martha. There was another Elizabeth, also um, white. They're all buried out in Beachton, where I live. They know that we're related, the white family members out there on the Lillian Road, which will pass by tomorrow on our tour. Um, they're buried back behind their homes, and um, the first doctor in, in that part of that area was Dr. Brown, who was Simon Hadley Sr.'s uh, grandson. And um, he took care of all the, the, the people out there in the community, including the blacks. But he, he retired when he came back. He had retired. He practiced in Augusta, Georgia, and he came back to Beachton and retired not realizing all these people were going to come to him as patients. He thought he was finished. But then he realized he had to open up a practice in Beachton because he had so many people coming to him for care. He took care of many of our family members, which I was told stories about. When they, he would come and see them. He would make home visits most of the time uh, to see the patients. And the thing about Simon Hatley Sr., you know, he, he was good to his, most of his, his slaves. He was real good to them, and he, he and, but Simon Hadley Jr. was the one that they really loved. He really took care of them. And so you mentioned Rebecca and Charlotte were two black slaves that he mentioned in his will. Um, these were phenomenal women, especially Charlotte. She was involved with, you know, doing so many good things, but she was also involved in a riot in that area, and a lot of blacks didn't like it for getting involved in it, but she was, she was a feisty woman. Um, and she instilled in her children good, good moral values. She instilled in them to work hard. And people who lived out in the country and in the rural areas and were enslaved believed in not only owning land, because all of them owned land. That was one big, one big thing about living in the country. They owned their land. They paid their taxes. Um, and, and they were just trying to be good people. And they were very good leaders in our, in our community. So... Um, let me see, we'll start with uh, Elizabeth Hatton Hopper and Dickie Walden. First, she, she came here uh, with her white father. Uh, she was half Cherokee, half white. She first, uh, we don't know if they really married, but I know she had a child from Prince Hartthorne. And his name was Pless, who my, my father's brother was named after. Prince Hartthorne's uh, son, Pless, had no children. He never married. And he opened up the first store, uh, they call it a general store back in those days, in Beechton. And we'll see where it was located. Um, 
And Prince, a uh, Prince by Thorne, um, didn't have any children. He later died. And then there was um, Lloyd Dickey. Lloyd Dickey was um, born from Elizabeth and Lloyd Dickey Sr. And they had uh, only one child, and that was Lloyd Dickey. And it came from Willie Dickey's farm out there in the Beachton area, so I'm not sure if they married either. Okay. And then the last one was uh, Jerry Walden Sr., which she did marry him. I saw that on the census where they did get married. Um, and they had two children, and that was Mary Walden and Jerry Walden Jr. And with Jerry Walden Jr., he married Eliza McGriff. Eliza McGriff is, is related to Jackie Robinson's mother. They were first cousins. They were two brothers' children. Eliza McGriff's father was George McGriff, who my father was named after George Walden. And Mally McGriff was Jackie Robinson's mother. She was Jackie Robinson. She was Mally McGriff Robinson. She, um, her father was Wash. They called him Wash for Washington McGriff. They had a lot of nicknames. And they were brothers, George McGriff and Wash McGriff, and that was my grandmother and Jackie's mother's uh, uh, father. And so that's how Jackie became, that's how he's related to us through his mother. Um, and so anyway, uh, Jerry Jr. and Eliza had Mary and Jerry Jr. Mary ended up marrying Heartless Hatley. Heartless Hatley was Jasper Hatley, one of his children, many, many children they had. Um, Heartless and Mary had a bunch of kids. <laughs> they had maybe I think it was 14 or 13. Um, and Heartless was the first businessman to open up a business in Tallahassee, Florida. And his son, Tom, took over that business after he passed. And then his other son, Ralph, opened up another grocery store right across the street from Tom's. So they, had, they were the first blacks to open up businesses in Tallahassee, Florida, which we're very proud of. Um, then you have all the other Hatleys. There were so many of them in ta Tallahassee from Heartless and Mary. Um, gosh. <laughs> uh, Dobbley's not here. Alpha's not here. They're sisters and sisters. Um, their mother was Aldona Flowers. You've got the Hines, um, which is our uh, offspring of Heartless and Mary. Jeannie was their daughter who married, uh, I think, Matthew Hines. They lived out in the 16th district, out in the Grady, near the Grady County area outside of Cairo. Um, and they had a lot of children, too. Um, so you got all these, all these grandchildren. I don't even know how my grandparents kept up with them all. But uh, they would go by horse and buggy in Beachton, mm -hmm. and I would hear them tell the stories how they go down the dirt road. It wasn't paid back then. And, and visit Heartless and Mary, and they have dinner, and sometimes they come to visit them in Beachton, the same thing. We believed in getting together. Families really got together. They loved one another, they visited one another, they looked after one another. Um, but you don't see a lot of that a lot of times now. You know, families move away, they move a distance, they don't even sometimes come back to visit often, you know, and it's not as good as it should be. But we've got to improve that. We've got to stay close-knit. Um, as a family. And then you have um, the other children from Simon uh, was, she mentioned Richard Hatley, Simon Hatley Sr. Um, Richard Hatley, you know, he had two wives, as she said, Agnes Meeks and Lula Reed Hatley. And they had a lot of children, except that his last wife, Richard Hatley Sr., he, he got married when he was in the 60s to Lula Hatley Reed. Uh, she was only 15 years old, and they had, I think, it was seven children. And um, Aunt Princetta was the youngest of them all. And then there was another Richard Moore from that union who uh, died later in New York. Um, but there were several of them. Uh, my grandfather, of course, King Dennis Hatley. They had 15 children. That's my mother's father. And Little May is the youngest of the 15. And there are now eight of them living, including my mother. And then... Um, what else can I say? There's a lot of talent in, in the family, especially in the Hatley family, when it comes to music. Lula Reed Hatley was very musically inclined. She only went to the first grade. She only, no, second grade. That's as much education as she had. Her mother died when she was very young. And so she had a lot of musical ability playing the violin, the harmonica, the piano, 
and no lessons whatsoever. She knew how to play them all. And those musical roots are now still going down the, the uh, ancestor, down the line of as our grandchildren, great-grandchildren all are coming. You know, many of them have inherited those musical roots. Can I and interrupt you on that little part there? Mm -hmm. With Jim, you know, the one, Jack's son has been playing the instruments here. Mm -hmm. Kind of remind me of him. Uh, my, aunt, my grandmother played the banjo. She played the harmonica. So, you know, it's just, and she played the organ. In fact, they had an organ in their home. You know, uh, during the time that she grew up, and also always had, we've always had a piano in our home. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. music is, was very strong and still is in our family. Um, Christmas holidays when I was growing up, we were always at my grandmother and grandfather's house during the holidays, and we would have big dinners because with all 15 of them, you know, they would half of them would come home for Christmas and bring their grands. And I don't know how we all slept in that house, but we slept. <laughs> and we slept well. I slept mostly with my grandmother many times because. People didn't like to sleep with me because I was wild when I slept. I was all over the place. And she would keep me in a certain place, though. But we enjoyed those days. Those were some good old days uh, with my grandparents, and I won't ever forget that. Um, and I really want to say we have got to really plant seeds like this in our children. Let them know, you know, the joys of being family and loving one another and helping one another. You know, we fall out sometimes and we disagree. It's okay to agree to disagree, but, you know, Still, stay together, work together, and, and try to make things happen. It's difficult these days with all the problems we're having in our life and in our country. Mm -hmm. um, not just COVID, but with the economy and the way it's going. So that's even more reason why we got to be closer as a family. we got to communicate with each, other, with each other and help one another and support one another in any way we can and pray for one another. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to say, let me go to... Uh, yeah, I talked about some of the Waldens. Um, the McGrath, as I mentioned. Um, oh, before I go back to that, let me go back to uh, with the Waldens. We had because there's so many people to remember. I have to write a lot of this down. You uh huh. You mentioned uh, three minutes. Three minutes. That's all I got. <laughs> you said three minutes. Okay. Um, any other questions before we go? We get ready to go into the next section that uh, Mark is going to share. Do an overview on historical document search. Okay. Can I go to the, to the portion of the book in the back where it says documents? I'm not sure what page that is. Two thirty-seven. It's going to be real brief. <laughs> Very brief. Very <laughs> brief. But I will say, uh, I'm, I'm, when I look out here, when I look out here in this, in this forum, I see the family. I see the family in all your different shades, sizes, and, and you know, I see you all from the oldest pictures that I have seen online, just in reflecting and looking at myself and my family, you know, I see the resemblance throughout my, my immediate family. So I can just imagine all of you all have the same features as some of our ancestors, if that makes sense. Yes, Ashe? Yes. Okay. <laughs> all right. um, the document section of the book was very, very important for me because I'm a person that's into history, I write stories, and so um, this actually stemmed from another project and, you know, filtered over to the family. Um, and in research and looking for my own personal family on my father's side, I said, let me look a little further on this side. Although, although the history has already been done since the 70s, from my uncle said, I believe, mm -hmm. she was the first one to... When I was on the Hadley side, right? right? A lot of work had already been done. And so it wasn't so much that I could really look for. But, but I started seeing that there was a few things that interest me as far as was Simon uh, D. Hadley really the father? Or Simon D. Hadley Jr.? Was Simon D. Hadley Jr. really Simon D. Hadley Sr.'s son? Richard Hadley, other Simons, Jaspers. 
so many of them all over the place. How do we connect which ones go with who? Mm -hmm. yeah. We have all these different narratives, but how do we really know? Right? That's just like when you go to church. You listen to the pastor, but if you don't go back and do your research and read the scriptures, oh, come on now. That's somebody. Okay? Then you, you really are only taking what that person says at face value. So you gotta go and do the research yourself and get the hardcore evidence. Right? If you're in the court of law, you can't have a witness without some type of evidence. Right? We have oral histories, but we also need the hardcore evidence. And so what you see in this book are the documents and the evidence that proves that some of these individuals are who that our ancestors say they are. So everything that you have has been valid. But we also find other members of our families listed in these, in, in these documents. We're finding people living next door to each other. Right next door to each other. <laughs> okay? And they're not even in the book. But we know you have to be related because you are a Hadley. And you're living right next door to them. Why are you not in the book? So some of those documents didn't make it into the book because we got to go back and validate it with oral history. Okay. You, you, you follow me? So there's more documents that should be in here that could not be in here because we don't have enough information. That's just like going about Dennis Hadley, uh, when was he born, like in 18, 20 or something, 18, 18 or or something, mm -hmm. right? Which game? Dennis. The, King Dennis? No, 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 Dennis, 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 Dennis. Dennis, Dennis. 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 Or he was when they were born. He was already like 18, maybe. Okay. <laughs> he's, in the, he's, in the, he's in the back of the book. Yeah, I got it right here. But like she was saying, you know, death certificates are very important. Obituaries. This is how we find, you know, our relatives. 1840. Huh? 1840. No, not, not. The children of Dennis Mary and was 1840. Dennis and Mary. Dennis Skeeter was born. I don't have a date here. Right, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. He's on one of the census records that he was like 18, early 1800s. Okay. But keeping up with obituaries is very important. You might think it's, up, it's, it's insignificant, but hold on to your obituaries. If you find obituaries of cousins and relatives, take them and hold on to them. Send them to somebody that's within the you know, the, the Hadley Hawthorne, Dickie Walden, you know, uh, structure, you know, committees, and send it to them. Because this is how we can go back and fact check and make sure that these people are who they are, and then we can add them into the books. Because we don't want to leave no one behind. Like they say, no child left behind. We don't want to leave nobody left behind. Um, is there anybody in here who's still trying to find who they're ancestors are. In the back. Go ahead, sir. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, the son of Mike Wall. Mike Wall had a son named Charlie Wall. Charlie Wall is my grandfather, which made Mike Wall my great-grandfather. I was told that Mike Wall
Because they're from this area, you should not have a problem finding that information. You can go to FamilySearch.com or you can go downtown to the uh, library, the Thomas County Library. And, they, and let them know the names and the dates of the, when they were born and when they died. They'll be able to pull that up for you in no time. Okay. That's not a problem. Just go down there and you can get that information. You could also check the courthouse. Remember back in the 1800s, this was all Thomas County. Uh, but it wasn't until a certain time. But still it should be in those records. The census records should be able to pull a lot of that up. Yeah. But I would go to the library and let them do it for you. Save you some time. Yeah, you can, if you go to the courthouse, if you go to the courthouse and go through their records, yeah. that yeah. would definitely be beneficial here in Tullus yeah. County, Grady it's County. It's going to be the best stretch. These two different counties for the Waldens and the Hattons, especially in, in uh, Grady County. Mm -hmm. Now, there's going to be some records found in Leon County as well, That's because right. there was a lot of property, a lot of, you know, transactions happening in Leon County and Jefferson County. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. Now, that's during the 18, you know, our 1825 Thomas County inception time on up. Just a little bit of time before that, if we go back and look into Montgomery County up there near Savannah, then we're going to find a little bit more uh, uh, information as far as like, you know, Hatley and, and people migrating this way south. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you're trying to go back a little bit further. So you're going to have to go to that city, that county records, you know, divisions to be able to find that information. So depending on where your ancestor is, you're going to have to go to that county, which is more than likely is going to be here in Thomas County and Grady County. Yeah, you'll find it. Well, I'm looking for a fact that might be all the child laws. They appear to be in Thomas County. Okay. But okay. well, that should be easy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't have any records of his brothers or his relatives. Okay. I don't have any child laws. Okay. Okay. All right. I don't have any child laws. I'm looking for any siblings of child laws. Okay. I'm trying to have some time. Yeah, but they should be able to help you, though. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Is there any questions? Yes, ma'am. You can find the information at Thomas University Botanical Society is out there, so you can go out there and find a lot of information. And Leon County, I pulled up something from the 1880 census from the Leon County Courthouse. Um, and so you can find a lot of information at the courthouse, but we do have a genealogical library here in Thomas County. And it's located and they're very helpful. They, um, you can call them and ask them for information, and they're quite helpful. And most cities have a genealogical library, yes. so you, can, you need to check out where it is. Check with the regular library or you can go to the courthouse. Either the courthouse or the library should be able to assist you in getting that information. Yeah, genealogical society. Uh, counties have those. Yes, and the yeah. census records through the courthouse. Yes. You're not online. Um, you got to actually physically go to the place. You can't pull it up online. No, you can pull it up online. Some of the National Archives. Yeah. Yeah. FamilyResearch.com. Yeah. Uh, uh, you can go, yeah, FamilyResearch, uh, Ancestry.com. Yeah. Any of those DNA type sites, they're going to have a lot of information already out there. You can go on like, you know, newspaper.com, some of these old newspaper archives, you know, and pull up, you know, a lot of, a lot of information. Yeah. Okay, and also, um, when I mentioned about the death certificates, I mentioned the war draft cards as well. That's in the back of your book, and it gives you some samples. So I just wanted you to just kind of make reference to that and such. I see you have a chart here, and this chart is right along with yeah, you sure can, but that one is the one. Yeah, that's something. Yeah, we don't have no children in here. But yeah, that's the that's that's the deal. Sixteen, and it was blended family, his mother, and and, and then they moved into town, and uh, then we had Uncle Richard, and um, this was before he got married. And a couple of other family members were there. Aunt Ollie moved into the house. All these folks were in there. Wow. This is my family. They're all in the house. Yeah. Yeah. The 